In Elden Ring, the mage class is known as... And I'm gonna be honest, I don't play magic that much. Why? It's because there's three types of strong weapons in magic, usually. Small blue, pew pew, medium blue, pew pew, and large blue, pew pew. And sometimes you can just get regarded as... Poor, you are weak, you are stupid, you are ugly, and you are short. Whoa, 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 hey! But today, I'm gonna see how powerful I can make intelligence at different stages of the game. These stages are pre-Godric, where only Limgrave is available. After I defeat Godric, I have access to Lyurnia up until Vernala. In the third stage, I unlock all of Kaelid up until Radon. After I defeat Radon, I have access to the two big areas of Volcano Manor in the Royal Capital. Post Morgoth defeat, I unlock Mountaintops of the Giants in Fair Missoula, and after that, I have every item in the game available. Let's do some rules real quick. Number one, no speedrunner stupid glitch stuff. Number two, the highest stat on the weapons I used have to be intelligence. And I've thought about changing that before. If that rule goes into play, we're missing out weapons like the Death's Poker or the Gravity Spear thing. And they both have an S scaling in intelligence. But enough talk. Time to see what that magic do. Choosing my character, he was either going to be Prisoner or Astrologer. And I eventually chose Astrologer because that magic stat needs to be high for all those huge requirements. Next, I named my character Alberuni and tried to create him from this picture. I used him because he's well versed in a ton of subjects, including astronomy, and I've got to find some way to use all the history classes I've taken in the real world. So finally, can I magically beat Elden Ring? Let's find out. As every adventure starts, I went and got my horse from Melina. Then I trotted over to the Waypoint Ruins and challenged the Mad Pumpkin Head guarding Selen. I admit I almost died, but I had to see what Selen was Selen. I admit, the sorceries were pretty trash, but she said if I gave her some scrolls, she could cook up some way better ones. So I went farther down south, and found this wandering noble who has a 100% chance to drop the glintstone staff. Then in the same area, I found the royal house scroll, which I could give to Selen, but I kept exploring. Further down south in the Weeping Peninsula was a merchant that sold the iron helmet. I kind of need a helmet since I'm riding a bike that's alive in a world where everything's trying to kill me. Further down south, I fought the demi-human queen who drops her staff and crystal burst. This staff has way better scaling than any of my other two, but it doesn't have any passive scaling with any spells that make them better. East of that, I found the Witchbane Ruins, where I picked up Ambush Shard, and I found Selen just sitting there. She started complaining about the degenerates that put her here, and I tried to knock some sense into her, but she called one of her bodyguards to take me down, and it worked. Back up north, I found D, but I wanted his armor, and he's pretty difficult to kill. Except, I didn't have to kill him. I could let this graveyard guy do it for me, as he is my meat shield. Except, I accidentally bonked him on the head with my cane, and I had to use my magic to kill him instead. Oof. This got me his armor, which is a lot better than the astrologer, paper-thin, bull skin. As I got better armor, I also wanted to get better talismans, but I didn't have any, so I went to the place where the Tibia Mariner is and picked up the green dog talisman. This increases your stamina, so I could cast more sorceries without running out of energy. My spells were also not that good, so I gave Selen the scroll, and she taught me the Carrion Slicer. This spell is your lightning spear of incantations, your bread and butter. It's just so good. You get the damage of a greatsword and the attack speed of a dagger, while just only using a little bit of FP. After this, I headed down to the final part of Limgrave, Siofa River. Not to confuse you with the Ainsel River in Lyurnia, the Siofa River is in eastern Limgrave. The first thing I did here is light all the pillars, and I went to fight the giant deer. This fight is really fun. It's not hard, but it's a good chance to test out your new weapons, and gives you a bunch of runes for pretty much no effort. And did you know that jump attacks with a carrion slicer are possible? No more hiding behind walls, shooting spells from far away, I'm a mage warrior person. Unfortunately, the jump attacks do the same amount of damage as the normal attacks, but that would have been too good. I also killed two scarabs, one containing the oracle bubble sorcery, and the other containing the great oracle bubble. I expected these to be good, they are found later than your average limgrave, and they're bubbles, they should be strong. Except, I couldn't use them yet, they require a bit more intelligence and arcane. Out of all the spells and incantations that made this list, there's only two sorceries, the bubbles. I really don't know how they made it here, maybe they hit your skin and pop, which makes a cut full of bleed? To level up arcane for my bubbles, I needed runes, so I went through this portal and found a roided up Komodo dragon shooting up growth hormone. I made this fight very easy, I just rode around on my horse, waiting until he did an attack, and then I would just spam glintstone pebble. 
I always overestimate the amount of runes I'm going to get for killing bosses. I thought I was going to get 80k from this guy, but maybe size doesn't compare to how many runes you're going to get. Fuck your feelings. Next, I upgraded my staff once more and challenged Margit. I made sure to use all my spells, and I was pleasantly surprised that the big bubble was actually really, really good. One thing about magic I don't like is it's hard to stagger bosses, or anything in general. To be honest, I thought my magic was going to be stronger, but we're only in Limgrave. To finish Margit off, I sent a big bubble towards him, and he started throwing knives, but it was over. His death brought me a talisman pouch, which I filled with a Radagon sword seal from this ice sword dancer lady. This increases endurance and vigor, but the other increased stats don't matter, and I'm not going to look at the side effects. Next up is Godric. I would describe him as the one dude in ballet that wants to fight you. Like, look at that roll around, bade blade, backflip, spin move in the air. If he wasn't down this grafting path, he would be a great dancer. So I casted one last bubble for Godric, took him down, and earned Godric's great rune and 20,000 runes through this remembrance. I love these guys who you can look in their eyes, you can tell something you're right. Cheeto. This stage had a lot of cool weapons and spells. Definitely not as powerful as strength, but I'm not at my final form. My main weapon for the stage was the demi-human staff, and my side weapons were the glintstone staff and the astrologer staff. There's gotta be at least one non-staff weapon where its highest stat is intelligence that I missed. And it's probably sold by a merchant hidden in a secret room that nobody's ever met before. Anyway, for the spells I used, uh, I'm gonna name them myself. First up we got Big Bubble, Small Blue Pew Pew, Small Blue Sword Butter Knife Thing, and Back Shots. <laughs> Also, there's only four sorceries here because there's only four memory stones available. In every stage, I make sure to collect all of them. In this stage, there weren't any pure magic talismans, so I used some that increased my chance of just not dying. This includes Green Dog and Radagon Scar Seal, which increases health and stamina. For my armor, I used three fourths of the Twinned set and the Astrologer gloves because I was a little too fat. Finally, I can enter Lyernia, where they're having the Italian Renaissance, except instead of money, they have a ton of magic shit. The first thing I always do in Lyernia is invest in stuff that'll help me for later. So I went to Volcano Girl, who told me to go to Crab Boy, I bought the necklace and returned it for a letter to the Volcano Manor. Next, I traveled to East Lyernia and jumped on the Spirit Spring to get on this bell guy. I think this is the only one like this, where you have to get on first and break the skulls, instead of whacking at his feet for 20 minutes. And I definitely prefer this one, because after you break all the skulls, I try and hide on the side to not get knocked off, but it just never works. Inside, you can find an industrial system where you can duplicate remembrances, and this is just free runes. Next, I went to the opposite side of West Limgrave and picked up the Carrion Knight Sword. I underestimated this. It's a straight sword, and those are pretty basic. But boy was I talking out of my ass. This straight sword is insane, and a fully charged Ash of War does so much damage. And it's not like it's an Ash of War one-hit wonder, its other moves are just so clean. And I made sure to upgrade this right away. Next, I went to the Rhea Lucaria Crystal Cave to 1, get more stuff, and test the sword out. I even found the marionette soldier chestplate. This may be the best armor piece I've ever picked up. Yes, it's worse than my previous armor, but it's just so cool. It feels so familiar to something and I just can't put my finger on it. But the main reason I came here is for two items. One, you get by killing the little rock guys to get the digger's staff. This staff passively boosts rock people sorceries like Shatter Earth, which is in this cave. This spell would definitely be viable if the AoE was a little bigger, and it turns out this staff actually has better scaling than the Demi-Human staff. And to get more spells, I picked up the Academy Scroll from the Lake Facing Cliffs. Then I brought it to the Turtle Man and exchanged it for a big greatsword. This sword is great for clearing out large groups of enemies like in the Black Knife Catacombs. The main reason I came here is for the Rosas Axe. I didn't need to kill the other bosses, but I did anyway. Not even close. After this, I went to the Academy Crystal Cave, killed the bosses, and rode the elevator up. Up here, you can find Terra Magica, which is a cool spell, and an overlook of Rey Lucaria. But I didn't want an overlook. I wanted to explore it, so I jumped off. In my other playthroughs, as a non-magic player, I probably explored 75% of this castle because there's so many hidden areas with magic items. Until now, I didn't even know you could climb the rooftops of Rey Lucaria. And there's so many items up here, like the Twin Sage Crown thing, which increases your intelligence by 9 and has a little bit of side effects. I even found the Graven School Talisman, which increases all magic sorceries by 4%. 
And I almost made it to the end of the rooftop section until I got blasted in the face by this high page. I'll definitely go and get what was behind the page, but first I want to kill Red Wolf of Radagon. I summon my two Mimic boys, and we started blasting. This fight is usually pretty easy, but my marionette boys started shooting bows and arrows at him. This made his moveset a lot harder to dodge, and it made it a lot harder to hit him. His death brought me a memory stone, which means I could hold more sorceries. After that, I went back to the end of the rooftops, defeated the high page, and inside the room was Azur's Glintstone Staff. I don't know who Azur is, but it kind of looks like a cactus. Okay, wait, maybe I should know who Azur is. This staff requires 52 intelligence. It must be good. And I needed a lot of runes for that. So I traveled up to Walmart Rea Lucaria and found the Carrion Stabber. But that didn't help with runes, so I challenged Loretta. And I didn't realize how good my twins were until now. These guys are like two loaded up super monkeys firing thousands of arrows into Loretta. I don't know how she survived. Eventually, Loretta got locked onto one of my boys, and I could use my super big grand slam dunk move on her. And no one surviving that, not even Loretta. She died, and I got to see my boy spin with arrows just flying out. After you beat Loretta, behind her castle you can find two towers. In one of them, you can find a mommy- Oh, <coughs> what? I mean Ronnie. 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 She's like the embodiment of just magic. And in the other tower, you can find Celevis, another magic man who has puppets. And he sounds like he should have a huge nose, but he doesn't. It's just a little small. Celevis is kind of useless unless you complete a bit of his quest line, and then you can buy some really good sorceries. But I'm broke, so uh, next I went and got the Sword of Night and Flame that I missed earlier. It's kind of hidden, and it requires a split between faith and intelligence. Okay. At this point, I started feeling the downsides of Lyurnia. There's so many weapons and armors to go around, but if you don't have the runes, and there's no runes here, you can't do anything. To try and combat this, I killed Magma Wormacar with Great Horn Trigoth Dude. It's only like 18k, but I'll take anything. Oh yeah, and the skull armor I got is from getting the Halig Tree Medallion from the Albanurk Village. And once you have that, you can go back to Round Table and fight this skull guy. When he dies, you can find his armor near where he was standing. Now, 18k from Magmor Makar didn't do shit for me. Like, nothing. So how was I gonna level up intelligence enough to get 50 intelligence to use all these staffs? I can't. But I needed somewhere to get runes, somewhere better, like Kaled, and the only way to get there is to kill Ranala. Now I'm definitely not as OP as I could be. If I farmed day and night trolls or whatever, I could reach that. And who's grinding runes in low level areas for fun? That's just insane. I'm about to drop your fucking ass, motherfucker. <laughs> this stage was kind of a failure. All of those high magic requirements, and the only way out was Kaled. For my main weapons, I used the Carrion Knight's sword and then the Demi-Human Staff. I kept the same staff because it's good with all spells. For my side weapons, I didn't really have any. It was the choice between scaling into sorceries and scaling into weapons. And strength versus int, I chose int. I said I was going to name all my spells, but I didn't realize how many you could actually get. So boom, here's the main ones I used. And my favorite one has to be the Stabber. For my armor and talismans, I used 3 fourths of the Skelebone set and the two-faced glintstone crown for plus 9 in intelligence. Then I used green turtle for stamina and the pokeball thing for the 4% magic boost. I know stage 2 didn't go as planned, but stage 3 I will be a demon by the end. There's a lot in Kaelid, so I started by going to the Kaelid waypoint runes and picking up the meteoric ore blade. I originally thought this was a strength weapon because it is the heaviest katana, but fortunately it scales highest with intelligence and it has bleed. Next, I was in Celia and I lit three pillars to get the Staff of Loss, a cool painting, and Night Comet. Then, after all pillars are lit, a fog wall opens up and you get to fight the Nox Swordstresses. And after I killed one of them, I realized that they won't attack me. As long as my bow guys are shooting, they'll just dodge the whole time. And this made for a fun carnival game of just shoot the bottle, or shoot the person. My reward wasn't the Nox flowing sword, but what's behind? Lusat's Glintstone Staff. Just like Azur's staff, this staff is very good with a requirement of 52 intelligence. Okay, time to level up intelligence. First, I accidentally killed the Knight's Calvary by walking off, but he made the same mistake. I'm not done though. It took about 10 minutes, but using the bleed on the meteoric ore blade, I killed the giant dragon and I popped a gold foot before to get a bunch of extra runes. 
combined with the runes from the Knight's Cavalry, this was 150k that went straight into intelligence. Now I had 48, not bad, just need 4 more to use all the staves. Oh, and I picked up Radagon's Sword Seal, which is stronger than the Scar Seal, so I replaced it. And with 48 intelligence, I could also use the Crystal Staff. This is a lot better than the Demi-Human Staff, and it boosts Crystal Sorceries, which aren't that good. But I want to use the cool old Magic People Staffs, so I started killing stuff and getting more runes. One place I visited was Gale Tunnel. This is a normal tunnel until you reach the end and you find the Magma Worm Makar. And would you be surprised that this boss drops the best intelligence katana in this game, the Moon Veil. But I can't use it because I need more points in decks. God damn it. So I just kept killing random mini bosses, preferably fat old men with giant red flags. And that one fat old man enabled me to use it. And if you're wondering where I am, I'm at the bottom of Radon's Tower, the divine one where you activate his great rune. But I heard there was a lot of runes here, so I came. I'll tell you one thing, there was runes, but the boss guarding them was no joke. I meant no joke until I put him to sleep and then cut his neck off. This gave me 100k. And behind the boss, you can find the God Slayer's Greatsword, which scales with faith, so I can't use it. Now, with the 100k, I leveled up Intelligence four more times, which enabled me to use all the cool old people staffs. So which one do I use? Lusats or Azurs? Speed versus Strength. And I chose Strength. This is because I already have Speed with the Moon Veil and its super fast Moonlight Ash of War. And who doesn't want more damage? But I'm forgetting about one staff. One staff that classes and rock people purple sorceries and outclasses Lusats and Azurs at this stage. The Meteorite Staff. It's because it can't be upgraded, so it's no better than 220 magic scaling. And at this stage, that 220 magic scaling beats Lusats and Azurs. Plus, it boosts Meteorite Sorceries by like 20%. Now, with a strong staff and sword, I felt like it was time for a dawn. First, I summon the whole gang, and if you're not fighting with an army, what are you even doing? Then, when I felt like he was about to stagger, I let it rain. This led to the second phase, where I tried it again, and then missed all of them. After that, I was out of mana, and swung a few times with my sword to bring him down. Combined with his remembrance, his death brought me 110k, which I put into health and stamina and mind for the first time ever. This stage was a huge jump in power level. I went from nothing in Lyurnia to now a god in Kaelid. For my main weapons, I used the Moon Veil and the Meteorite Staff, and for my side weapons, I used the Meteoric Ore Blade and Lusat Staff. Instead of putting all my spells, I'll just tell you some of my favorites and some new ones. My favorite is definitely Loretta's Great Bow, and I use the Rock Fall one, and then Big Comet. For my armor and talismans, I use the Twinned Legs and Arms, and I use the Skeleton Chestplate and the Glintstone Head for intelligence. And for talismans, the Great Old Lady gave me one more talisman slot for killing two bosses with great runes. So, to fill the void of that one new talisman slot, I use Radagon Sword Seal, Green Turtle, and the School Mage ball talisman. Since Radon is dead, now we have access to Althus Plateau, Volcano Manor, but first... This is where my previous long-term investment comes into play. Remember that girl I gave the crab necklace to? Well, she gives me an invitation to Volcano Manor. Then I ran out the front door, went like right, I think, and then found a slimy worm by a tree. Worm is a pointless creature. The only reason a worm exists is so that bigger, more important animals can eat something. They can't see, they sit in the dirt and they just move around in the dirt and they try and hide a little bit and then a bird eats them. And most people live their lives as worms. Most of you are worms. You don't do anything important. You're just living in your shit life, living your little dirt, just sitting there wriggling, hoping an eagle doesn't come along to fuck you up. From the big worm, I got the Cerulean Hidden Tear. This gives you infinite FP for 10 seconds, another piece of the puzzle. Then I took the other way into Volcano Manor, killed the giant lizard, met God, and found- Oh my god, Grandpa, can I get a selfie? Comma to Zer. Selen, what the hell is this? I have another Grandpa? You roll your fat ass out of bed and all you want is some f***ing damn cinnamon buns and After I got the two legendary sorceries from Mazur and Lusat, I can choose to fight the rainbow guy with Selen. Then I went back to pick up Lusat's armor and Azur's armor. They both look freaking epic. God damn it, maybe I shouldn't have ended her questline. 
Now, with more powerful stuff, I can explore the area below Kaelid, Nokron. Here, my marionette soldiers got some target practice with Mimic Tear, and we killed them. I'm not gonna go over the fight with a deer, cause I killed one a while back. But here's what I came here for, the Finger Slayer Blade. When given to Rani, she opens up the Rena's Rise, atop you can go to the Ainsel River Main through this portal. You can also find her armor set here, but that's a one-way ticket to getting killed by anything in one hit. The first thing I did in Ainsel River is pick up the Wing of Astel behind the T-Posing Man. I admit I had never used this sword before, but it's really fun and it's a good break from being a showerless Moonvale nerd. Then, to progress Ronnie's questline even further, I killed the Baneful Shadow and progressed onto the Poison Swamp. This led me almost all the way to Astel. But before that, I killed Godefroy, which drops a legendary talisman, the Godfrey Icon. This increases the power of charged spells. Not gonna lie, Estelle looks like a beaded friendship bracelet. And after beating it, I still couldn't get past this wall. Let me in, please! And at the time, I didn't know how, so I took a trip back to Volcano Manor. This is where I fought Wrinkly Balloon, and when you take a player out of his duo, he kind of just folds, so I popped him. And the other boss of Volcano Manor is Rikard, and I tried, I swear. I always get halfway through the second phase, and I just collapse. And I might not come back to Rikard, so I fought the Horseman instead. Using Common Azur, I got him down probably a fourth of his health, and I Moonveiled him until my soldiers could probably kill him. Come on, buddy, a few more hits, just a few more hits. Disaster struck. My boy died. I would not let his death be in vain, so yeah. And it turns out, to get behind Estelle's blue wall, you have to get the Dark Moon Ring. Thanks, Reddit. And behind the wall, I found an elevator that was super long to now one of my favorite areas of the game, the Moonlight Altar. I don't know how I went so long without seeing this. It's just amazing. What's not amazing is the scary-ass dragon at the front door, who I think is blind. But I still got roasted. I don't know how, because I don't see any eyes on that man. I'm also pretty sure he has 99% magic damage neglect, because he doesn't take anything from my sword or spells. So I had to get creative. And I realized I had a physical damaging spell, the Meteorite spells, so I ran right under him, used the Meteorite with the infinite tier for 15 seconds, and obliterated him. Upon his defeat, I got 120,000 runes and a Frost spell, a Dula's Moonblade. Below the Manda Celis Church, I put a ring on it and got arguably the best intelligence weapon in this game. It also looks really cool. Matching one of the best weapons, I also went and got one of the best spells. After completing the puzzle at Chelona's Rise, at the top you can find Ronnie's Dark Moon. I'm the dark side of the moon. What? Although finishing Ronnie's quest line did have some drawbacks. Now, I felt like it was time to enter the capital. The only thing I did here is kill this tree man for a lord's rune, and then I went up to Godfrey. I remember hearing that the great shield guys were really good for this fight, so I tried them out, and they are really good. They're just huge tanks while I did my spells. And I was happy that the Moonlight Greatsword lived up to his name. It did a fifth of his health every time it hit. His death brought me another talisman slot, so now I could equip Radagon again. Time for Margit. Welp, there's only one way out of this. <laughs> But it does contain the unstoppable, uh, impossible. I've assembled all five special cards, all five pieces of the puzzle. Exodia, obliterate! Margit defeated. 
In this stage, we had some huge upgrades. For my man weapons, I used the Moonlight Greatsword, Vanala's Staff, and Lusad's Staff. For my side weapons, I used the Moon Veil and Estelle's Sword. I think that the better magic weapons you're gonna get, the more projectiles they'll spew. So that's good, I guess. Two of my new favorite spells are Common Azure and the Ice Greatsword thing. For my armor, I switched around a lot, but I ended up using 3 fourths of Blide Set and Ronnie's Ice Hat, which increases damage of all ice things, I think. And for my talismans, I used Godfrey Icon, Radagon Icon, School Graven Talisman, and the Stargazer Heirloom. And with that out of the way, I can enter the North Pole. This is definitely the most barren and empty area of the game, but I did find the Hefen Steeple, an intelligent sword that I thought I could pair with the Moonlight Greatsword. And pair I did, I upgraded it to plus 9, and this is honestly one of the coolest combos I've ever seen in my life. To boost their jump attack damage by 10%, I got the Claw Talisman and the Ritual Sword for another 10%. To test these out, I went and killed the Gargoyles, a very hard duo, but I don't think they'll be coming back anytime soon. The real reason I killed them is to get the Prince of Death staff in the Deep Root Depths. I'm not sure if I'd use it, but it's nice to keep it just in case. With a strong set of weapons, it was time for Fire Giant, but I couldn't beat him without my pal Alexander. I couldn't believe Alexander's strength. He was knocking this man out for minutes. At the end of the fight, I almost died of the Fire Breath, but Alexander knocked him out and saved the day for the win. I welcome you to Ohio. There's not much you can do without defeating the Godskin Duo, so I summon Bernal and we smack some ass. At this point, the Moonlight Greatsword was almost at peak power. I was doing thousands of damage, and the ice procs were just killing them. After Balloon Man died, all we had left was Ice Flavored Condom. He tried to fight back, but we put way too many holes in him. Foreskin Brothers down. After this, I tried a different build. If you combine Lusat Staff with the Staff of Loss and Night Comet, you get this. But for the time being, I switched back to my swords because I needed more items for that build to work. You are ready then, I take it? Then let us begin. I am the great... As I suspected, victory was impossible. <laughs> Well, that's another 15%. Now, there were some items I wanted in the Consecrated Snowfield, but did I want to kill Neil? No. So I hopped in a tornado, and it brought me down there. Well, it kind of did. I had to parkour a little bit, and I made it to this teleporter, which brought me to the real Consecrated Snowfield. Here, I solved the puzzle at the Albaneric Rise, and at the top, you can find the Graven Mass Talisman. This increases all sorcery damage by 8%. Next, I traveled to the Yellow Annex Tunnel and fought Estelle Stars of... Oh, wait. That boss took a lot of attempts, but it's worth it. It gave me the Meteorite of Astel, a better version of the Meteorite Fall spell. Finally, I felt like I had earned a fight with Malekith. The first phase was pretty easy. Of course, my damage is insane, and the Moonlight Greatsword Ash of War helped me stay at range. Although, I knew the real challenge was going to be Malekith. But, at first, I got a huge stagger at the start, but I didn't get the repost because I just wasn't near his eyelid. In the end, I went for a jump attack, then we both went for one final attack on each other. Want. 
finally, the Ashen Capital. Was. Take the throne. Queen Marika has high hopes for us that we continue to struggle unto eternity. I am my bones. Next is Godfrey. For this fight, I went for the Knight Comet, Lusat Staff, and the Staff of Lost build. It did a pretty good amount of damage, too. During Horlu on his ground slam up attack, I wanted to get a common Azur off, and it worked. I took no damage because he's so damn slow. After that, I just ran out of flasks, so I switched back to my original build, and I got him. Finally, I'm here for Radagon and Elden Beast. Let's go. Turns out Radagon might be the weakest enemy to frost damage I've ever seen. He just got deleted. Right before Elden Beast, I popped my 15 second FP tier. Then I ran behind him and used the Meteorite of Astel for as long as I could. This knocked him down a third of his health. In the end, it was me, Elden Beast, and the Moonlight Greatsword. There was nothing that could stop me now, except for chasing stars. All it took was a recast and an R2 with the best sword in the game. Out of intelligence, faith, strength, and dexterity, this is still my least favorite way to play the game. Mainly because of the blue pew pew, and I don't like feeling scared of my shadow every time I wake up in the morning. But, in the end, I get the best ending in this game. 